I actually got booed off stage rapping at my high school's homecoming dance. But let's go back to the beginning. When I was four, I wanted to play violin, and my parents said, you're the size of a violin, maybe start on piano. So we found a piano teacher, and I asked him if he could make me play like Elton John, to which he replied, we can do a lot better than that, my G. When I was six and seven and eight years old, all the parents and adults were like, oh my God, this kid's so good. But I didn't like it. I didn't care anymore. When I was eight or nine, I wanted to stop playing. My parents were paying for lessons. My brother was playing, my younger brother. So I wasn't going to stop. We would go to lessons every Friday after school, the dreaded Fridays of my childhood, because I didn't practice throughout the week. So going into the lesson, I would hold my younger brother at gunpoint and force him to do his lesson before me while I scrambled and practiced with headphones on on a different keyboard and made up for the whole week of not practicing. In middle school, I got into jazz band and rediscovered a passion for playing piano, being part of an ensemble, and seeing how arrangements come together to make a full piece of music. The piano is part of the rhythm section with the bass and guitar and drums and the trumpets, the saxophones, maybe a singer, are the people on display in the band. I was kind of in the background. The exciting part was improvisation. Because I already knew scales and arpeggios, I found out that during a certain time in the song, there's certain notes that you can play that will always sound good, and all you had to do was mess around with the rhythms. It was a game changer for me because it allowed me to be creative within music. So I already had a strong foundation. And around that time, I discovered that there's music programs that you can use to make music on the computer, to make beats, if you will. You guys might be familiar with Fruity Loops. I illegally torrented, downloaded FL Studio 6 or 7 at the time and started to learn that I could just loop a bass line with my left hand. It was easy to add drums, add like a piano or something over the top, create. I was just making fire beats, my G. And the problem was, though, that there was no one to rap on them. This was before the day and age where all of your friends are SoundCloud rappers. Actually, it was 2007 when I got into high school, and SoundCloud had just been invented. It was not really a thing. Facebook was three years old. Everybody was still on MySpace, and I was going under the name Beast Child. I always used to say the word beast, and I, I always used to say beast mode. Oh, he's beasting. This is before Marshawn Lynch took it mainstream. I'm not saying he copied me, but it's a funny coincidence. And I liked child because I'm a Libra. I have to constantly contradict myself. So Beast Child has this yin and yang vibe to it. I'm a savage, but I'm an idiot, right? So that's Beast Child. Much later, we removed all the vowels so it would fit on a California license plate, but that's another story. I think it was sophomore year Spanish class where we had an assignment about verb conjugations. And I don't know how a song came out of this, but I was saying, Cocina me la, no me la cocines. Cocina me la. No me la cocinas. Cocina me la. Okay, right? And I took 50 cents in the club. Boom, 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 right? Boom. Audacity. Record the song. Record the audio. Put it over the beat. Banger. Drop it in class. Crowd goes wild. I'm a hero. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But there was some decent reception to it. And I started having the idea of rapping over these beats that I was making. My beats were mostly melodic. I decided to create more space in them. I always started with the melody and added the drums later. I never started with drums. My first studio album was called I Am The Holiday, which is a terrible name for a terrible project. But that takes me on a tangent here. For all of your friends that are SoundCloud rappers, support your friends and believe in them. But a lot of people, which I also ran into this issue, will be five months, six months into rapping and think that they're going to make it big because they're so good and so different, what skill or craft can you possibly do for less than a year and be that world-changing with, right? A lot of people, and probably a lot of people you know that are dropping tracks, have been doing this for maybe a year, maybe two, and it's okay to promote your, your projects and to show your friends, but the sense of entitlement that they feel they deserve the world because this is life-changing music, it's kind of out of touch with reality. But we'll get to where I ran into an issue with that. Let's talk about socially how I was at school, right? I was the class clown. I was a band geek, the proverbial nerd, right? I had friends in different social circles, and I was well-known, but I was certainly not a popular kid. 
I was a band geek. But for me to be certified as a band geek, I had to go to band camp. Enter Casadero. This is probably one of the most competitive music summer camps in the U.S. People from all around the country, you had to send in an audition tape and then fly into Northern California, and you would sleep in the woods for two weeks and basically play music all day. You would sleep outside. It was in the summer. It was cool vibes. Like, looking back, it was a really cool experience, and you would make some friends, of course, but you would wake up and go practice with this group for two or three hours and then lunch and then do this for two or three hours and then do this smaller group and do the whole orchestra. The piano part was really competitive because they only had so many piano entries, but I would do solo performances, perform with groups, perform chamber music with a flute or, or with a singer. Very cool. At the end of the first week, you would put on this big show where all the parents and adults from the community would come watch. And then at the end of the second week, an even bigger show. It was a cool opportunity. At band camp, one of the years that I went, because I went many years, my best friend was this trumpet player named James Gillum. And James is the man, tall trumpet player, cool guy, cooler than me. And we were boys and we were talking a lot. And he said that his brother raps. And I was like, oh, I'm a rapper. You know, I'm, I'm Beast Child. What's your brother's rap name? And he said, g Easy." And I remember thinking, g Easy, man, this guy's not going anywhere with a name like that. But now... Everybody in the world knows g Easy, and I'm making a YouTube video about my failed rap career. But I digress. Came back from band camp, and I was ready to focus on my second studio album, The Study of the Beast. And at first, the title I came up with was Beast, and then the second part of the word, Eality. You do the math on that one. Uh, that goes to show how dumb I was, and still am. It only took one friend to educate me on what that word means, and I changed it to Beastology because that's not what I was going for with the title. And around this time, I started to perform as much as I could around the school. I guess, side note, because I grew up playing piano so much, I was really used to performing. I was quite comfortable on stage, and I attribute maybe a lot of my comfort doing these kind of videos or recording shorts or just public speaking, things that a lot of people fear because I put myself out there a lot. I was not afraid to get on stage at school. In fact, at lunchtime in the quad, I would be performing with my boy on turntables, good old fashioned wax Serato uh, on the turntables. And I was rapping in the quad with some people vibing, but I would say probably the majority, most people probably couldn't stop watching and cringing heavily. You can imagine if someone at your school started rapping in the quad with microphone and speakers and everything, everybody would watch. And it got to the point where everybody knew about Beast Child and knew who I was. That doesn't mean that everybody liked me. There was a day where I was walking to school and a car drove by and said, yo, Beast Child, we love you. And literally two or three cars after someone like took off a soda and threw an open drink at me as I'm walking back from lunch to school. That kind of summarizes the love-hate relationship that I had uh, with a lot of my classmates. And to be fair, I can't really blame them because I wasn't very good and I was really putting myself out there. That's a dangerous combination. So eventually with a lot of me performing at the quads and it gains a lot of uh, excitement from the students, the vice principal came up to me and asked if I would like to perform at homecoming. And of course, I said yes immediately because that was my dream. I had literally had dreams of me performing at homecoming and just rocking the stage, man. Everyone's going crazy. It's like, oh my God, this guy's the man. I didn't like him at first, but you know, he can really do this thing. This was my moment. Now, the thing is, Vice Principal didn't really help me out too much in terms of facilitating the logistics behind this performance. He just kind of told me the DJ is going to show up at this time, make it happen, you got it, I'll tell the DJ it's all good type of thing. I live down the street from the school, I, I walk to high school every day, so on that Saturday in the middle of the day, I went to the school when I knew the DJ would be there, I saw him like pulling equipment out of his van or something. And I said, hey, uh, what's up, man? I'm Beast Child. I'm going to be the guy that like performs. He had no idea what I was talking about. I was like, listen, man, you're not going to mess this up for me. This is my big moment, okay? 
So I told him, oh, don't worry. I talked to the vice principal. It's all good, bro. Um, I have this flash drive. I have a CD. What works for you? Can I give you these instrumentals for you to play? And then maybe like I come on stage or you announce it or something. It wasn't really going smoothly. He wasn't really working with me, right? So I decided probably the safest, easiest thing is for me to just get the big speakers that, that I have access to, that I use for my quad performances, go get those and put those on stage next to his speakers. I will be in control of my own thing, go uh, red and white AV cables, audio cables into my iPod at the time. It's going to go great. Cool. So I go to the dance. I'm scared, nervous, excited. Obviously, this is going to go crazy. And as soon as they hear my, my fire track world renowned, this is going to go epic, okay? I'm not really worried. I'm just so excited to get on the stage, man. They announced the homecoming king and queen. It's probably like an hour into the dance thing. And I'm just like on the edge of my seat. And some people know there's whispers going around, whatever. The guy finally says, okay, now we're going to have Beast Child come up here and rap. And right away, there's mixed reviews from the crowd. And by mixed reviews, I mean some, oh, boo, oh, my God, wow. And I didn't think about, I'll just tell you in order that I processed a lot of these emotions. But I got up there, and he's, like, already cutting the music. It's awkward because I'm going on stage, and I kind of grab the mic. What's up, everybody? And some people yell as you naturally just yell when someone is on the microphone, but there's already some people like, no, don't do this. I plug in my music. I press play on the beat and the volume of my speakers is probably 25, maybe 50% of the volume that his speakers were at. You know, in a club or at a dance where it's like loud, like the speakers are blasting, you can barely talk. These speakers were maybe half as loud as that. So that's really bad. And I have my microphone plugged into the same speakers. I turn that thing up. I turn it up to the max and I actually go past the max, like into like the red zone and I go full and it's still not that loud. The beats playing time to go. There's like eight bar count in right. But with, with the, the opening of the beat going I can't really see the crowd, only the people in the front because there's lights and it's like dark in the crowd. As soon as I say the first couple bars of the song, as soon as I start rapping, the speaker can't handle the amount of volume that I'm like asking it to put out. So when I say something into the microphone, the beat goes down and none of it's that loud and it sounds terrible. And the vibe is killed and everybody's standing around. Again, this is nothing like how I imagined it. Everybody's standing around, and probably 15 seconds into the song, the boos start just tsunami of hatred <laughs> coming my way. And just, you know, and I know right away that I've killed the vibe. People are just there to try to have fun and enjoy the time. And guys are trying to talk to girls. Girls are trying to talk to guys. People are grinding. They were vibing. I've killed the whole vibe. The production is terrible. The song is terrible to begin with, but they'd have no idea because they can barely hear anything. They start booing. People start throwing water bottles, damn near tomatoes, anything they had they were throwing at me. And I think I didn't make it 30 seconds into the song, maybe 20, 25 seconds. That felt like an hour, right? And I literally said, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm sorry. And I just... I think I unplugged my iPod and I just ran and I just ran out and I ran home probably crying, to be honest. Uh, I was very traumatic and I still had years of high school left, right? I wasn't a senior. It's not like I was about to graduate. This was homecoming. So it's early in the school year. Anyway, you get the idea and you can imagine how I felt going back to school on Monday. But if you think that that stopped me from trying to have a music career, you must not know me very well. Anyway, okay, let's get it popping. That event didn't exactly create more haters than before. It just made the haters that already existed more vocal. And I say haters, like maybe that's not a fair term because I was really out of touch with how that performance and how what I was doing might have come across. To be honest, it was kind of self-centered of me and, and it, it really was poorly executed to where 
most rational people would see that this is not the time and place for that on top of the fact that I wasn't actually good. Okay, so that's a deadly combination. But again, my irrational optimism continued and I just really believed in myself. I started, I kept making beats and music and maybe just not putting it out on blast so much, but I decided to promote a Beast Child concert. So maybe I'll just have a private concert where I, I'm able to rent out the Performing Arts Center, I'll promote this show, I'll sell tickets, and just the people that want to see me and my boy Campbell perform will come out and it'll be sick. That ended up being a pretty big success for the release of Beastology. That shit went crazy, man. And we had like 200 people come out to that. It was cool. It wasn't a life-changing amount of money, but it was really cool to see that amount of support and I performed and it was sick and people made t-shirts. It was really exciting. Ended up the following year having another Beast Child concert 2.0. And that was kind of what happened in high school. Luckily, my 13 years of piano got me into a very prestigious conservatory of music at California State University, Long Beach. The piano videos that you see on my channel were all from when I was practicing for my actual college audition to get into the conservatory of music and i just wanted to take a break from the really difficult music i was playing and i would just play like a pop song i would literally learn those songs the piano songs that you see on my channel i would learn those in like five minutes and then play it and make a video and put it on youtube and then like okay fine go back to playing mozart or chopin or beethoven or whatever the hell i was playing at the time wc right children's corner banger anyway i also had to compose a piece of music to submit because I had to get not only into the university, which I actually got rejected academically, but I had to get into the music program, which they made an exception for my academics and got me into the music program. But I also had to get into the composition program, which I think they only, ex they less than 10. I, maybe it was like four, six, or eight people that were piano majors studying composition anyway got in there, cool, wasn't for me. But by then I was kind of more committed to just wanting to be a rapper. Maybe I could also be a producer. Six months into being a music major at Cal State Long Beach, I decided that if I actually wanted to pursue the music route, I probably didn't need a formal classical degree. Dr. Dre didn't have a degree in making beats. Why would I need a music degree if that's what I wanna do? So I almost immediately changed majors to communication which also was a difficult concept to swallow, being that my whole identity, my whole life had revolved around being a music kid, a band geek, and now I was just, what am I, who am I? But that's probably also a normal thing in university to try to discover who you are, your place in the world. Communications was something that made sense to me because of the jobs that it led to. It's something that I'm interested in, that I'm good at, so I'm really happy that I majored in communications. I was going to minor in music, ended up not minoring in music. But throughout college, just locked in on rapping. I really realized that I was never that good. And I was really putting myself out there, I don't want to say prematurely because there were people that supported me, but I probably shouldn't have tried to like take over the whole school after one or two years of rapping and two or three years of making beats. I, you know, putting it out on MySpace and SoundCloud is one thing. But I see kind of where I went wrong, and I don't blame people for having negative reactions. Maybe the level of disgust they showed was over the top, but people are young. What are you going to do? You got to respect it. So the videos that you see on my channel are actually all from college and beyond. Actually, they're all during university. They're all on summer breaks from Cal State Long Beach. My musical focus throughout college university years was just getting better at rapping. So shut up and rap right? Ironically, but just make raps freestyle over every beat. I was writing every single day and I was expecting nothing. I wasn't even putting out everything that I was rapping. I was getting ready to like rap at parties, you know, get ready. When you're at the barber shop, be ready to go like everything, just ready to perform. And that changed a lot of my perspective. I got a lot better and I was just a little bit more in touch with reality getting live feedback, and it was cool also to start fresh in a brand new place where I didn't have these preconceived people knew who Gabe was or who Beast Child was already. It was a fresh start, so that was cool. 
by rapping a lot, I got better at rapping, obviously. A lot of your friends that have only rapped for a year or two are probably only rhyming one or two syllables at a time, right? Very simple stuff that most people should be able to freestyle, and they're putting that on track. That's what I was doing early on. But starting to rhyme three syllables, four syllables, like rhyming bars within the overall bar. And the last part rhymes, but the middle part also rhymes. Like complex metaphors and punchlines where you have two or three or four or five bars setting up a punchline. Uh, verses where there's all one theme within the verse. That was like the next level that I reached. But one mental barrier that I had was... I hate to say almost not knowing what to talk about. I would basically just rap about hustling, making money, being a hard worker, being a beast and a savage, like punchlines about how I'm better than you. But I always felt like I almost wasn't mature enough to make the kind of music that I wanted to make, if that makes sense. And I didn't use that as, a, that as an excuse. It didn't like slow me down, but it was something where I always thought, that is what I need to make an album that's a whole concept that's going to change the world, man. So anyway, long story short, I probably made 100, 200 of these just rap freestyles. You can see some of them on my page still over the course of college, university years. After college and university, when I had money, I made my first actual album that today you can see on Spotify called Matter of Choice, which is short for success is a matter of choice. It's just if you want to choose to do it. But really, I don't want to overhype it because it's just me sounding good, but there aren't even as many punchlines and quotable bars in that album and piece of work as there were in some of the freestyles that you might see on my page. Anyway, that's also to say that none of this stuff is life-changing or really sick or go check it out. A lot of why I'm making this video is because of questions that I get are you ever going to go back to music? What happened with your music? You're a rapper. Are you still a rapper? Now you know the whole story.